Hey everyone, my name is Michael Gianangeli, and I'm a first year MBA at the MIT. I have the honor of in, 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 introducing Martin Matak, founder and CEO of Vert, for this next CA panel. It's going to be great. I hope you guys enjoy it. 30 minutes long, and that includes Q&A. With that, I'll hand it over. Thank you very much. To Martin. All right, well, good to be here. So uh, I think every company has a story. I think we have a really great story to tell. Uh, just had a quick show of hands. How many students in the audience? Oh, okay, great. I think you'll really appreciate this. So I'm going to start off. Uh, I'm going to play a quick video about the company as a 101, and then I'm going to get right into it. Vert is focused on creating better experiences for athletes, coaches, and spectators. Vert optimizes the performance of individual athletes and teams in almost any sport. More than jump height, more than jump count, Vert technology delivers real-time data to quantify performance, motivate, prevent injury, and train smarter. That's why Vert is the official wearable technology of USA Volleyball. Worn on an athlete's waist, the Vert device captures and records all jump measurements, then transmits this information to the Vert app, where the athlete or trainer can see all-time stats, highs, averages, even view detailed session data. All data is wirelessly synced to the athlete's myvert.com online profile, where an expanded set of analytical tools can be used for data analysis and comparisons. The Vert team system arms coaches and trainers with the ability to monitor, track, and compare performances of their entire team during training, practice, as well as live games. While Vert elevates the performance of athletes in the game, VertCast gives the fans something to cheer about too. VertCast makes wearable data available for display on jumbotrons and in live broadcast feeds. The body, over 31 inches on that last jump. An architecture built to bridge wearables with broadcast and fan engagement. VertCast was the first wearable to be used in NCAA games and championship series on ESPN. And now, Vert is proud to introduce the next generation wearable for athletes, Vert 2. Now you can measure your intensity, measure your effort. Vert 2 goes beyond jump measurements with the added ability to measure G-force and acceleration. Vert 2 delivers an array of advanced analytics engineered to quantify exertion stress in your total workload allowing athletes to train smarter, avoid injury, and perform more efficiently. Any sport, any fitness activity, quit counting steps and measure your intensity. The ability to measure effort is here. Vert 2, the wearable for athletes. All right, so that's the hype company hype video for all the students. You gotta have a good one, right? Uh, we're going to talk about wearables. That's where we all started. Fan engagement, uh, motivation for an athlete, performance, um, the newer technology that we've come out with, as well as injury prevention. But as I asked before the students, uh, hey, how, do, you know, how many are here? This is where it all started for me. A little bit skinnier version of me. I think I ate the players, and now I'm a little bit bigger. Uh, but. Uh, that was back in 1993 when I had the first vision of this stuff. But the technology really wasn't there. And I majored at the University of Florida in advertising, but I had a minor in astrophysics. It was uh, love going left and right brain, but there's a really, really nerdy side to me. This is my Star Wars collection. <laughs> and if you know who that character is, I want to talk to you after this show. Wearables. So the market really became mainstream, I think, last year, and it's really starting to explode when Apple entered into the space, Fitbit went public. Now just the sports side, every day you read about something new and how they're really saying this industry is really starting to blow up. Just in sports analytics and fitness wearables, they expect it to be a $40 billion industry by 2021. So 
a lot of it's timing. If I came out with this technology back in 1993, we wouldn't be where we are today. It wouldn't make sense. And it sure wouldn't make sense when we made our first prototypes in early 2000. And it really wouldn't make sense in 2007 when the iPhone first came out, when we were doing our prototypes with a Nokia 810 uh, doing wireless stuff. So it's all about timing. So the first thing we did is we came out with this little device that tells you how you jump. But there's all kinds of other great analytics with it. It's great for quick tryouts and injury prevention we learned really early on. Motivating players, the performance of players, and of course, a lot of coaches love it for recruiting stats. If they see someone jumping you know, 35 inches or even 40 inches, they want to know who that player is. Uh, but then being able to see that in real time is an amazing thing. And, and what ends up happening always is you, you just end up training smarter with everything. So this is a tiny little device. This is what it looks like in my hand. It's like a USB jump drive that you wear around your waist. And it talks real time to, let's say, in that case, an iOS app. Okay, once we got out there, we quickly started getting relationships and partnerships with companies. We have a partnership as the official wearable of USA Volleyball. Um, just like pitch count in baseball, um, they never really had a tool that could measure jump count. So for sports like volleyball and basketball, it's so important to really understand jump load. They were immediately engaged with us and wanted to understand what's going on, especially as the Olympics have come around uh, in this summer. Um, Working with AU as well was really exciting for us, especially with uh, youth. And then starting to do um, relationships with, you know, broadcast. I mean, think about how exciting this was when you come up with this idea and then you actually see it in reality with ESPN. Or we, we did it first with the SEC ESPN launch and then this past year with the Texas Longhorn Network. And so uh, as a company, you can look at us as kind of the wearable for athletes. That's how we've positioned ourselves. And one of the things that's just automatic is fan, fan engagement. And with fan engagement, um, we came up with this thing called Vertcast. And so it's really simple to, to take this data once you have it going wirelessly. And of course, there's all kinds of obstacles with that too. But in sports, when football came out with the yellow line, and especially in the sky cam as well, it really kind of changed how you watch football. I remember as a kid watching it, and um, it, you know, it was, it's not that it was boring, but when technology enters into the realm of sports, it makes it so much more exciting. Just like watching an NBA game and you're seeing the camera views right behind the backboard, that makes it really neat when someone does a dunk as well. So what we did was we took that wearable data and had the capability of showing that in real time, as the players were playing, on jumbotrons. And I think this was from this past year's uh, AVCA Under Armour All-American game, um, which we actually did uh, over three years ago. And the first place that we actually ever did this was at the University of Florida. They, the, the head coach, Mary Wise, for volleyball totally got how important it was, not only just for injury prevention, but for the fan engagement side of things. And so that really kind of helped us out. And here's kind of what it looked like in that game. So we're screaming that data in real time. And what a fan never really had a chance to see is that, that she just jumped 32 inches. It's amazing. And by the way, she's like 6'5". So, um, so when you could do something like, like that in a game and show the athleticism of an athlete, um, it's, it's powerful. And fans love to see things like that. But what's also exciting for us is when you start seeing the viral side of it. So like Ole Mess is really great about this. They'll show their player. Um, you know, here's the stats, they had seven kills and then, and then they had a vertical of 28.6 inches and you get to tweet that stuff out. And then um, we were approached by volleyball because we had such a big following with it and we really loved how we started off in volleyball. Um, we, we sponsored this thing called the Vert Challenge and from what I know it was the first time a wearable company sponsored anything with sports to do its own thing. So the first year was in Texas, that's why we worked the Longhorn Network and you'd see really neat things real time in a game and the ability to show hey, this is how high these people were jumping in a game. And here's a quick video of what that looked like um, and a snippet of that interaction. The Vert Challenge, next on LHN. This is the Vert Challenge. Very interesting evolution of the sport technologically. Four or five attackers on each of these teams, respectively, have a transponder in their waistband, and the vert technology not only measures the height of their individual jumps, also the number of jumps they make. 
Last jump, as you saw, for Al-Hassan, almost at 30 inches. Snyder with the kill, and Chaka Bagu over 31 inches on that last jump on the set from Chloe Collins. 4-0 led by their All-American middle blocker, Al-Hassan. Well, and this is what she brings. The, her blocking is what's so, it's intimidating. She has three right now, Abagu has zero. Told you we were tracking with the vert technology that gives their vertical jump, and Al-Hassan average jump 27 inches, her all-time best measured at 38. She touches 11 foot three, that's 15 inches above a basketball hoop. Thanks for joining us here on Longhorn Network. You're watching the Vert Challenge presented by Vert, the official wearable technology of USA Volleyball. Eight or nine or maybe even 10 players out here, all the attackers and blockers, like Ramat Al-Hassan, are wearing a fob or a transponder in their waistband measuring their vertical jumps. The top jump so far, Holston, 34 inches. There's the average. Chaka Bagu, Ramat Al-Hassan, and then Annika Albright from Nebraska. That is so far in the first challenge as Nikki O'Rourke will go back to serve. But that's one of those plays. It's like a fun hitting drill right there for Obagu. She could just get up and nail it, not have to worry about any hands or arms in front of her. Obagu, 34 and a half inches. See the vert numbers so far on the tournament. These are the highest jumps throughout the course of. And Chaka Bagu just registered the highest. Holston at 34, Ramat al -Hassan. And Annika Albright from Nebraska. So you can see how fast sports can change just by some of those stats. You know, she did this amazing play. She did this kill. And all of a sudden, she had a 34 and a half inch vertical, but also comparing it. So it really doesn't matter if it's jump or speed or any other type of measurement out there. The, the key thing is to engage the audience with things that they were really want to know. Um, other parts are fun things that we're adding to the table. So like a kid's jump zone at events. We've, we've also seen um, really exciting things where in a stadium um, you have players jumping and they get to be in the 30-inch club versus one of their... Uh, you know, try to be as, jump as high as one of their favorite people or one of their athletes. Other aspects is the social highlights, like so that one that says 30 inches from a player named Payne, that was actually from the NCAA Championship Series for volleyball. And while the data was streaming real time on ESPN, they were also being able to socially send that stuff out. And I think those are the types of things that really change fan engagement with a lot of stuff. So let's talk about motivation. So a lot of things are motivating, obviously. Being able to see something in real time, we have a platform called Props. When you give someone props to be able to see, you know, here's how high they jumped or here's some other uh, measurements that are involved with that. Uh, we immediately started doing fun things like the 30-inch club and the 40-inch club with kids. And what ends up happening is there's like this really fun team rally that goes on with that. And that's the part that really makes it fun in the motivation side of things. Um, we created a thing called Vert Club, and so for volleyball programs and uh, basketball programs, they have the ability to um, take this information and make it real time in their own clubs. So as kids are training, you know, I've had a lot of coaches call me and tell me their stories. And one of those stories was, you know, I was working with this one athlete, and she finally jumped 30 inches. And the whole team rallied around her, and she broke down in tears, and then they gave her the 30-inch club shirt. And it's, it's things like that that when you're trying to achieve those goals, um, when you have the ability of technology to give you those numbers, that's the only way to really kind of do that. And so um, our technology allows that, and it also allows those facilities to be able to send out this type of stuff socially to show how great their club is and all the new things that they're doing to make their players better. And Kids especially love social currency. So besides getting the shirt, we also give them the 30-inch club badge, for example. Um, this is a quick example of someone who jumped 29.9 inches. She was just that close at an interactive court, but then with persistence, she actually jumped 31 inches and extremely excited about that. And here's a sample of like in a club. So to be able to see athleticism, 
in real time and show the measurements of that athleticism in real time is exciting not only for the players, but it's also exciting for the fan engagement of the parents as well as the coaches when they're doing certain things. So then obviously there's the performance side. So you take all this information and we build a coaching platform that allows you to take multiple sensors in at the same time and we call it Vert Coach. And you could see all the players' stats and you notice on one of the, the, the uh, pictures there, there's a, a red number, so 103 jumps. So in volleyball or basketball, depending on the position and obviously depending on the drill that you're doing, you may want to monitor your jump count, just like pitch count. So I can't remember the number for pitch count, but I think it's like 58 times and they pull a little kid out of little league. Um, with jump counts, depending on the position that it is, you may set it to say, okay, when they hit 100 jumps, it's enough for the practice. I know firsthand with our friends at USA Volleyball that when they're doing their practice and they're practicing for the Olympics and they've accomplished a lot of amazing things, certain players for injury prevention, they'll, while they're practicing, they'll just look across and run by that iPad to see what's going on or look at it on the screen that they have in practice. And once they hit a certain number, they're done for practice. It's just kind of a standard so they don't overdo it. Because the reality is, while you're doing certain things in practice and the momentum is really good, you just want to keep going. But sometimes, if you're really managing those numbers, you have the ability to stop before something really happens. And some of those players have sent me personal emails that I feel extremely honored with, where they say, thank you, I think I've been healthy because of your product this entire year. And so it's things like that that are starting to change as well with performance. Um, this is an example in when you see performance in a real game. It's a revolution. That was something that UF posted, and I thought it was really neat that, you know, in a game they could actually see that number in real time. Um, and that was that six foot five player I was telling you about. So she's not only is she tall, but she's got hops. And um, you never really were able to see some of that stuff before. And so with the NCAA, uh, they allowed us to use it in volleyball, and we were able to show that in games. And the coaches also have the ability to adjust player performance for injury reasons. Um, while they're playing, but at the same time, that was a perfect example of look what you did after our hard work with strength and conditioning this past week and how you soared over that player. How do you stop that? I mean, she was clearly a lot higher than anyone on there, and you couldn't stop a block or a spike like that. Um, so we're, we're at that point where we're honored where we have a lot of fans, and we got a lot of testimonials. So like Karch Karai and Russ Rose and Mary Wise, uh, they – they, they use our technology and they are using it for all the right reasons, mostly for injury prevention. Um, and with, with that, they get to see that data in real time. They get to flow that data in practice like on leaderboards as you see here. Um, and so that makes it really impactful on the players too after practice or after a game. Um, new technology that we're uh, developing, we just um, have been announcing it this this past uh, couple of weeks is uh, the ability to measure um, or give you measurements in G-Force. And so uh, with that, uh, we're coming out with our newer product that we really call an athlete trainer that gives you the ability to um, measure every movement and the G-Force of that movement. And for us as a company, we think that's really going to change a lot of things, especially in the pedo pedometer world. So imagine, you know, if I walk 10,000 steps, a little bit bigger guy, I'm a little bit out of shape, well, maybe a lot out of shape. Um, and I'm comparing it to an extreme athlete. You know, I walk 10,000 steps, they walk 10,000 steps. What does that really mean? It doesn't really mean anything. Maybe it motivated me to go walk around or do something. But I can promise you that person did a lot more effort or they did it with a lot more fluidity than I did. And so what happens is if you have the ability to measure every movement and the G-force of that movement, um, I think it really starts to change the game for every sport. And that's what we're starting to see early on. So we kind of built this platform, and you'll see this was me doing jumping jacks the other day. And every movement that I was doing, it was showing that G-force of that movement and then accumulating the G-forces so you get to see what it's like. And only you can compare yourself to you. So when it comes to the numbers, you could sit there and say, okay, I'm going to start running, you know, I'm going to try to do a marathon. And 
You want to see how you start off with and where you end off with and are you becoming more fluid in what you're doing? Or maybe you're a cyclist and maybe you're doing a 75 mile ride. And that first 25 miles, man, your Gs per second or your Gs per minute are this, maybe it's 3.2. But as you're getting more tired and you're really starting to fatigue, maybe it's turning into more like 4.1 because you're just doing a lot more uh, lumbersome activities, okay? What we're focused on is taking all these measurements and I think you can only take real measurements. Like when we give you a jump measurement, it is 32.1 inches. Or when we give you a G-force measurement, it's you know 8.3 Gs that just happened in that peak acceleration. Um, and combining it with heart rate, um, now you have condition because you can also see you know the heart. Like at CES, I always tell this story. I kept looking at my Apple Watch and I was kind of laughing because my heart rate was like at 110 the entire convention. It was coffee and coffee and coffee and coffee. And I wasn't really doing anything. Um, and so when it comes to heart rate and you start adding other measurements to it, jump measurements and G-force measurements and things like that, then you can really find out the condition of an athlete or yourself. Um, so we came out with Vert Team Sports and we were really honored to have the Miami Heat as our first uh, NBA client. Um, and that's uh, ironically in our backyard. And so that worked out really well. And at the same time, um, they helped us get into the Sioux Falls Sky Force, which is their D-League team. And last week actually was the first time um, we had done this where in real time we could see that or collect that data in an actual game. So that's where we see this going in a lot of the professional side. As a company, we also built the ability to, uh, you know, that data is really important and they want to keep it private, so we created Vert Stealth. And Vert Stealth is the ability to, uh, uh, it doesn't go to our cloud, it goes to your own servers as a customer. Um, on the injury prevention side, you know, one of the main things is kids are doing the same thing over and over uh, with few breaks. And what our focus is with everything is recovery. So we think that as we get all these analytics and they're starting to make a lot of sense and we're looking at all the G-force and jump measurements and we're looking at low surges and high surges and, and things like your jerk, um, we, we feel like all these things are gonna go down the road of recovery. And right now we're collecting beta teams to help us with a lot of this stuff outside of the world of volleyball and basketball as well. Um, USA was the first to really uh, do this on a very high level with us. Um, and uh, here's a quick video from CES on that. We're here at CES and we uh, unveiled new features with our jump rate monitor. So this little device shows you how high you can jump in real time as well as transmits that data to a smart device. Bird is fantastic, especially for a player like myself where I've had some injuries. So it's really important because it allows um, our coaches and our uh, medical staff to track uh, how many jumps I'm taking, how high I'm jumping. Does that change over the course of the season? So we're thrilled to, to be able to work with Bert and uh, the level of, of, of excellence that they bring. Well, one of the things we're really excited about in our association with VERT is we feel like it's going to help us train smarter, train better. We're incorporating the VERT into our everyday practices to maintain a, a good workload. So when we are training for the Olympics and really gearing up to, you know, go for an Olympic qualification, we want to make sure we're not overtraining our athletes. So every day we use it to track jumps, track movement, uh, so we're not getting too tired and we're still able to train as hard as we possibly can the next day. There's nothing wrong with a silver medal, but there's definitely something to, to winning a gold, and I think it has boosted the U.S. women's confidence, and I think going into um, the World Cup here, which qualifies us for Rio 2016, it's very important to go in with that confidence. So the nice thing is, after that video, uh, Team USA Women's won the uh, FIVB World Champions for the first time ever. And I hope we had a little bit to contribute to it. And then back to back, the men's team won for the first time in 30 years, the World Cup. Um, and going into the Olympics, you know, our, our prayers are that our teams win the gold coming this, I believe, August for um, Team USA. So please, of course, uh, check that out and support USA because it's really an amazing dynamic thing to see all the accomplishments. So with that, uh, that's the end of my presentation. I caught up on our time. And uh, 
I want you guys to part with, I think we always have this great story to tell, and everything you saw here today was done in about two years. So as a company, we've evolved really fast since we launched the product, and for the students out there, is you could do the same thing too. So thank you.